Hey everybody, I'm Eric Pratt from U.S. Broadcast, and today we have Axel Technology with us in the studio to cover their amazing broadcast consoles. In particular, we're going to be covering the Oxygen 1000 and 2000 and all of the amazing features and IP connectivity that they have in order to integrate to create amazing live productions in this day and age. And with that, I'm going to introduce Marco Branzanti, their CTO, and I'm just going to pan around to him and pass him the mic. There you are, sir. Oh, yes. Thank you. Thank you, Eric. Here we go. Have my mic on. Hello, everyone. So first of all, a few thanks. Thanks to Eric, of course, of, you know, letting us uh, be here with him in his offices, uh, U.S. Broadcast Distribution here in, in New Hampshire. Uh, thanks to Simona Lippi, which uh, flew with us, with me, um, in the U.S. And to Stefano Grego, which is also here. He's our uh, channel distribution director. So today uh, we're going to talk about our consoles. Uh, audio, uh, Axel Tech is very known uh, in all these years, for more than 25 years, for the broadcast console. And now we're going to talk about dig digital broadcast console. I have the Oxygen 3000 here with me, with me. I'm sure everybody knows about it. I think it's our most successful product. We've been selling the console so much, and people are enjoying it. Why? For the features. It really is packed and full of features. And being a digital console, it has a firmware based, and we've spent five years adding and adding and adding new features, which are so nice. And what we decided to do is kind of attack the, 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 the smaller part of the market, introducing two brand new consoles, which are smaller, which are cheaper, of course, but which have the same amazing features packed and built in. And I'm going to start talking about the 1000, we call it the O1K, and the Oxygen 2000, we call it the O2K. And the difference between the two consoles is just the number of faders. So the O1K has six faders, and the O2K has 12 faders. Remember the O3K? That had 10 faders. So actually, the 2000, in this case, is not smaller as far as faders are concerned, but it actually has two more faders. Let's talk about the quality. The DSP, the digital processor, which is inside these consoles, is the same exact DSP that we have on the O3K. So we're getting the same incredible digital audio quality out of the console. And actually, they also share the same firmware inside. And that's why Whatever we develop for the 3K, you're going to find it also in the 1K and the 2K. So what are the major differences? Let's see. The 3K used to have two USB ports built in, which allowed you to connect a computer and use them as audio in and audio out instead of buying external audio cards to put in your computer. Well, does the 1K and the 2K have that? Yes, it has. So you can connect your laptop, and you're going to use your favorite automation software directly to connect it to the console. What about the telephone hybrid? Remember, that was one of the nicest things that was built into the 3K. Does the 1K and the 2K have that telephone hybrid? Yes, it does. So this means that you just plug in your PSTN, your RJ11, and you can start making your phone calls and putting them on air. That's also interesting. So. What about the Bluetooth module? Oh yeah, I forgot. The 3K had a nice Bluetooth module which allowed you to connect your phone and make your calls directly from your phone, but not only use your phone for the, all those voice over IP services like Skype and so forth. Well, 3K had it and the 1K and the 2K still have that Bluetooth built in. So until now, no differences apart <laughs> from the faders. So what are the real differences? Well, let's see. In the 3K, we had five microphones. On the 1K and the 2K, we have only three microphones. But the microphones are nice. They're balanced. They have uh, phantom power, so you can just power them up directly from, uh, from the, the settings. 
and most of all we have dynamic compressors and equalizers on the microphones this is a really cool feature because this is one of the let's say the major reasons the most important reasons why you switch to a digital console and an analog console you had to have those equalizers those compressors and expanders as external equipment for your microphones just to you know to tune them up here they're built in so you can take advantages of the digital dsp also to do that then as far as stereo inputs is concerned the oxygen 3k actually had eight stereo inputs while the oxygen 1k and 2k have four stereo inputs but there's way of adding more stereo inputs to that and have even more than the 3k i'm going to tell you at the end then let's go on let's talk about telco interfaces there's a dedicated telco interface as on the 3k uh, there's also one on the 1k and one on the 2k and as the 3k model you can actually use your stereo inputs if you want more telcos what are telco for telco is the ability to connect external telephone hybrids and have more calls coming in and so it, the, the the capacity of all three of the, our uh, oxygen console is actually five telco modules built in which actually do your n minus one you know, uh, audio so so you don't get the feedback okay what else oh i haven't talked about the output the digital output all three consoles have um uh, AES, aes edu digital output to go to your audio processor or or other uses and of course i have uh, one digital input on the 3000 the 1000 and 2000 do not have digital inputs but also this is a thing that can be let's say uh, solved and solutioned why one of the major features that we have on the Oxygen 1000 is, and 2000 is the Dante option. The Dante option is an optional card that allows you to have audio over IP in Dante format, which also means an equivalent of AES 67, which is a more, let's say, general audio over IP format. And if you insert the Dante option in the 1000 and 2000, it will add eight channel stereo inputs and eight channel stereo outputs. What, of this, what, of the, what does this mean? That if you need to convert microphones or st analog stereo inputs or a digital stereo inputs, you can just get some converter boxes and convert them to Dante and you will get your sources to your consoles. Or, if you want to install this in a bigger facility where you have your Dante sources just running around on your LAN network, well, that will allow the Oxygen 1000 and 2000 to integrate seamlessly into your audio over IP infrastructure. The feature of having the, uh, the Dante option and allowing eight stereo plus eight stereo inputs and outputs actually means that the 1000 and 2000 enter the class of the uh, uh, audio IP consoles. So it is an IP console because of the numbers of inputs and outputs that it allows. And at an incredible price because I also I told you that the 1000 and the 2000 are the cheaper, cheaper brothers, uh, less expensive brothers of the O3K. Let's see what I missed out. I think we're good. Now I'm going to go into some details. In my opinion, one of the nicer features of Axel Tech Console is that all three of uh, the, the Oxygen line have an HDMI output. The HDMI output was something typical of bigger consoles. You had to buy an expensive console to have this option. While this allows you to buy any inexpensive TV or any inexpensive PC monitor and you connect the HDMI output and what you get is an incredible control panel and I have here the control panel for the Oxygen 2000 where it's packed and full of information on the status of the console so you do not only get your tally so if I turn off some channels and turn on some channels I get my you know fader on off status 
I get my view meters and I have them individually for each source. I also have, I didn't mention this, we have five actually program outputs. One is the program, which is my main, and then I have another four auxiliary buses, which I can use as I want, plus the pre-listen bus, which is also an output bus. Of course, I have my clock, which synchronizes automatically with the internet. I have my studio and control room counters. I have my GPI situation. I didn't mention it. The system has GPI inputs and GPI outputs, which are completely programmable. One other options, which I didn't mention, are Excel Tech Oxygen Talk Boxes, which are really cool boxes, which you put in the studio. And what they allows you to do is connect directly the microphone and the headphones. It has a on-air button, it has a cough button, and it has a tally button, which will tell you when you are on air. And the interesting thing, it attaches the, 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 the microphone and the headphones connect to the main console using just an RJ45 cable, which is handy. You know, and you have to, you know, solder XLR or jack headphones. And you can have one of the talk box for each microphone that you have in the studio. And uh, this will actually tell me the situation also down here. So as you see, the, the HDMI output is actually very, very useful, and I always suggest it. So what is the main difference? Why is the console a lot cheaper, the 1000 and 2000, respect to the 3000? Well, the main difference is we took out the display. So without the display, the cost could go down, and we want to satisfy also the smaller radio station, the community radio station, who now can, can afford a digital console instead of the analog console. But without a display, how can we actually uh, the, uh, operate on the settings? So we gave a lot of tools to do this. One of the latest one I want to show you. I, if I press simultaneously the last four encoders, the last four knobs, actually the HDMI output converts itself into the same display that I would have in the Oxygen 3000. And I can navigate if I want to upgrade. I go in service, and then I go into software, and then I tell the system to upgrade, and he will show me the latest versions that I have on the website. Actually, I just updated just like that, just directly from that. And if I want to go out and con con go to my the, the, con the normal control panel, I press the ESC button a few times, and then the, con the console actually is working in a normal uh, control panel mode. That's good. That's one way of doing it, okay? Well, of course, the other way of doing it is using the internal web server. Yes, all the three consoles, well, three consoles have an internal web server that you can use any PC, Mac, or Linux, or your or Apple, iPhone, or whatever you have, an Android device. And on the upper right corner of my console, I see I have two IPs. One is the main IP, which in this case I got from DHCP, and the other one is what we call the rescue IP. If by any chance I lose my IP or I can't find it, you know your console can always be fine. On the default IP, you can change it. We suggest not to, but it's, it's there as well. So right now, what I'm going to do, I'm going to find my mouse, just a second. Can't find it. Oh, no, I needed to press it. Okay. As you see, I open my Chrome, and I'm going to write my password here, and I'm entering the web browser, and as you see, I'm going to go in Settings, and I'm going to go in Audio, and I'm going to go in Inputs, and I'm going to select one like a stereo input, and the first stereo input, and you see, I, ha I have all my settings available directly from the web. That's a, that's a nice way of configuring, and all the three consoles also have that. But we also have a third way, and I left it for last because we think it's a real added value. So we made a Windows application that you can install on your Windows PC, and it's called the Oxygen Remoter. And what it does, actually, it allows you to connect to the console and do remote control. So if I go up and down with the slider, the slider number 12, as you see, which is the Dante slider, that actually starts operating, and I can see that it's also moving on my GUI. As the same, if I simply start 
pressing buttons here and there, and it's all interactive. Now let's try pressing the PFL, and if I press the PFL, the buttons will actually change the status also on my surface, on my console in real time. So whatever you do on the web remote, on the remoter, sorry, also the console uh, interacts. One thing which is interesting about, so if you put it on a touch screen like I have over here, I can go up and down. So the, the, the faders are not motorized. So what happens if I touch a, a fader and I go down and I move them all, and so that means that the true audio level of the fader is not the same which is represented physically on the console. And how do we do that? Look, everything starts blinking. So the blinking means, hey, watch out, someone from the, from the remote application actually changed it. And there are actually some settings that tell you if, if you, uh, okay, if I move the fader, actually it will stop blinking. So then the actual physical position of the fader is in control. And there's a, ni a nice setting in the software that, could t that tells if to instantaneously update to the physical position or you need to pass the fader over that volume, the volume which is the virtual volume, in order not to hear, you know, up and downs in the audio. So, yeah, there's a lot of, we put a lot of effort into it and to make it really nice, really perfect and easy, easy to use. Of course, using the web, uh, the, the remoter, sorry, you can also, you also have the setup page. So you don't need to use the web interface and you have all the same settings that we've seen before. Inputs, stereo, and there you have them, the same settings that we've seen in the web interface. One last thing regarding the console. So since we have this really, really powerful DSP can, that can support more than the 12 faders that we have on the 2000, more than the six faders that we have on the 1000, and more than the 10 faders that we have on the 3000. And since we developed this incredible remote application, we decided to include virtual faders. What are virtual faders? Well, as you see on my remote, on my control panel, I have the first 12 channels which are actually the physical faders which are on, are on my 2000. But as you see, I have eight additional channels which are virtual channels, virtual faders, which goes from 13 to 20. So if I go in my web application, in my remote application, I keep mixing up this, and I go on a channel number 13, and for example, I select Dante number three, well, that will become an active channel that I can use on my remote application, and I see it here. And so I have eight additional virtual faders, virtual channels on the 1000, so it's six plus eight, it goes to 14. I have eight additional on the 2000, so it's 12 plus eight, and it goes to 20 channels. And I have eight additional on the 3,000, which is 10 plus eight and goes to 18. Now, this is not the end of the story. Why? In this precise moment, my guys in the office are working hard to develop an interface that allows you to connect a MIDI controller with your extra channel. And you're going to, what does this mean? That you can actually transform your virtual channels into eight additional channels, okay? So as you see, they're small, they're compact. Why are they compact? I didn't say that. These are, are compact console, and for us compact means that there's no core, the core is built inside, so you have the connectors on the back of the unit. So for the 3000, since it's a bigger console, we used a lot of XLR connectors. On the 1000 and 2000, there was not enough room to put all XLRs, so what we did is we used RJ45 connectors. These RJ45 are not LAN, they're audio cables. We can supply the breakout uh, cables as an option. So if you need the breakout cables, we send them, sell them individually. We also send them as a complete package. But we thought, well, when our customer receive the unit, it's so nice, they want to plug it in right away. So what we did is we did give XLR for the first microphone, for the first input, and for the first output. 
So what that does that mean? That as soon as you get your console, you're able to plug in your ordinary, ordinary uh, uh, connectors. You go on air right away. You hear the quality, which is fantastic. And then you go and make your cables yourself. And, 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 you, and you can do that with all the time you, that you need. So I think I covered all the subjects, right, Stefano? The Dante. I did talk about the Dante. Oh, what, why, why do you need Dante? Well, of course, okay, let's, audio over IP, of course it's the future. And, but also analog signals and uh, digital AES is, is important and we have to continue to keep using it. So, uh, you want to go towards Dante. And the, the Dante, the optional Dante interface allows you now to actually buy your, uh, your economical and unexpensive digital console and then in the future when you do will have other Dante appliances other Dante devices or you just want to enhance the input and output capability of your console you just pop in the Dante card and you have a digital IP console correct also this is not just a console which is targeted the small radio station with a low budget or or let's say to the community radio station or the religious radio station it also targeted to big radio stations which maybe have a small uh, production studios uh, small production studios for the journalist for example do remember that the console the smallest one has a telephone hybrid built-in telco built-in bluetooth built-in so it's perfect for a small recording studio, for a production studio, for your journalist. And at the same time, with the Dante option, it actually connects to the bigger environment in which probably a big radio station in a product, big production studios or on-air studios, they will have big and expensive consoles. So it's actually a nice accessory to this type of integration. Oh, correct. Mobile studios. If you have a small mobile studio in your car, in your van, you can create the production environment. And so it's very, very versatile. So, of course, the best feature of the console is that you get a great quality digital console, digital IP console, I would say, at a smaller price yet than the Oxygen 3000. Probably the success of the 3000 is that it goes in a, in a market, in a target, where its price actually defines uh, the, the, its success. And we wanted to continue with the same success of the 3000, targeting a lower market yet, but it giving the same exact features. The basics are there, and the features are even better, I would say. So that's why we believe that the Oxygen 1000 and 2000 are destined to have an incredible success in today's market. Okay, I think I've said it all, okay? So, questions. So, if we have some feedback and some questions, I'll be happy to give the answers, if I know them. Okay. Okay, let's say, wait. So the virtual, they're not virtual inputs, I would call them virtual faders or virtual channels. It just gives the possibility to extend from the 12 or 6 and have 8 more. The selection of what input source you assign to that fader comes from the list which is already inside. So it doesn't add additional sources. It just adds additional faders. Okay. But the sources are a lot. Why? Do you remember that amongst all the three three microphone inputs? Oh, the talk box. Yeah, I'm going to talk about that. So I have the three microphone inputs, the four analog inputs. I have the built-in telephone hybrid, the one plus four telco, the Bluetooth device, uh, the and the two USB without Dante. I forgot to tell. Or you can use USB or use the Dante. But if you add that Dante card, you get eight stereo inputs, guys. And mean 16 microphones. So usually this would be used with the Dante option. Then there's a lot of appliances that go mic to Dante, line to Dante, digital to Dante, okay? 
And this allows you to bring in those Dante signals with a lot of quality. And then you have your extra faders here. Then what you do, the MIDI controller is just to get those eight faders. We chose the number eight because all MIDI controllers actually have eight <laughs> faders, okay? And actually transform the faders, which you can use only with your mouse or with your touch screen. No, you bring them back to physical and you uh, can actually use it as so. Could be nice if you have a lot of microphones, you, put, you get all your mics into Dante, and then you just put like a, 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 a M audio, a, a Kai, I think it is, or a Behringer a control surface, or maybe others in the future, let's see. And you can get your faders and use them for your extra microphones. This is because, well, and the Oxygen 2000 has 12 faders. They're already a lot, but you can add eight. But of course, this is kind of handy if you only have a 1,000 with just six faders, and it becomes a little, let's say, they are limited. I just want to tell you another thing. That we have a in nice feature in the, in, the, in the 1,000, 2,000, and 3,000, which is what we call our channel AB selector. What is that? You can predefine uh, input in the A, in the A of, the, of, a, the, of a single channel in the A letter or in the B letter. So you can put maybe... I don't know, the tuner into channel A, which you sometimes don't use, and you can use, I don't know, a satellite input or a microphone or whatever on the channel B. And the interesting thing is, it, this was typical in analog devices, and we liked it because it's very handy. And you can assign any source or to channel A or to channel B, independently of where it's connected, and this is typical of a digital console. So what you can do is switch between channel A and channel B with one single button. And that's kind of a way also of better using uh, your, your faders. Even if they're not enough, with the A and B function, you can do fast switching between one source and the other. And that's why we have it here. I don't know, let's go on the first one. If I go down, and it, I have mic one now on my first fader, but I can select between mic one and Dante one just with the switch. Note that they, the fader is open, and I try to switch. Actually, he will. Oh, there's a setting. It will not allow me to do that switch in real time. It will remember me. Hey, you're already on there. So you lower the fader, you do your switch, and you can turn it back on. I hope I answered the question. Talk box. Here it is. It's fantastic. Generally speaking, okay, the Dante advantage, audio over IP advantages over uh, traditional cabling. So it's actually a matter of how you cable your studio. So normally, if I had to bring a source to my console, whether analog or digital, I would actually make a connection, a physical cable with copper cable an audio cable, and I would connect my source to the console, okay? Uh, first of all, Dante, or any audio over IP, is digital. So it delivers digital quality, okay? No losses, no distortion, etc. And most of the thing is you can change the architecture. Why? Dante audio over IP, it goes through the IP network. So what does this mean? Well, now all computers are connected. What you can do is you can connect the Dante appliance, whether it's a source or it's a destination, and you can take advantage of the networking that you have in your offices, and the audio actually can go from one point to the other. So if I have something very far away in the other offices, like a tuner, and I need to connect it to this mixer, I could run a cable, an analog cable, or a digital cable, but what can I do? If it was Dante, I would plug in the tuner into the local switch, into the local uh, RJ45 connector, and then I would plug in the Dante from the console, and I could just configure the Dante network and actually send the audio through the network to the console. So what does this mean? Well, you save. It's actually a, a way of getting, you get a lot of flexibility because you can send, if something is connected to the network, you can send it wherever on that network. It has to be a LAN network, so a good network. And there's another thing. You can send a source 
to multiple destinations so it's like a distributor and that's another cool option about the audio over IP network uh, but most of all you can actually route anything to anywhere so if I'm in a secondary studio here and there's a source in my primary studio can be a tuner can be a mic or can be anything what I have the possibility of using that source also here without doing any recabling so let's say that the Dante network can actually be considered like a virtual routing system which works on your LAN network it's actually a real routing system which which you use as a, a normal router but using the LAN the network as the means of, uh, of, of the distribution Okay, meanwhile, I'm going to talk about the desktop. I hope I was clear. It's not that easy, okay? Uh, so, this is our talk box. It's very interesting. Why? You put it in your studio where you have your guest in the guest, uh, in the production studio. And what you do is you can connect your microphone. By the way, Phantom Power supported. What you do is you can connect your headphones. Here we have one and two, and we have two headphones. And what you do is you just connect your RJ45 connector to the uh, oxygen console, so you don't have to make any strange cable. It's not LAN, it's not digital, it's still analog, but it uses RJ45 cable, which are cheap and expensive, and you don't need to solder and so forth, to transport everything. And what it gives you, it gives your volume, but it also transports GPIs to the mixer. And what do the GPI do? But first of all, you turn on and off your, your channel if you want, you have a cough button, so if you need to cough, you press it, <coughs> and then you release it. And when the fader is or the fader is on, when the channel is on, it all becomes nice and red and acts as a tally, and it tells you, hey, the channel is open, so you're if you talk, you're gonna go on air. And it's a really, really cool option. Why? You put one of these for each of your microphones in your studio, and with just a couple of LAN cables you're already set up and connected and it's a really really cool option this works actually imagine that we have some customers that buy bigger console than the 3000 just because they have bigger budgets and maybe you know they need more inputs and so forth but they still purchase from us our talk box because it's a really cool accessory which not any every manufacturer is made okay let me Oh, oh, okay. Comparison table. On the 3000, four talk boxes. Why? It's a five microphone. One is microphone is usually in the control room. The other four are actually in the studio. On the 3000, only two. Why? Three microphones on the 1000 and 2000. Three microphones. One is for the control room and the other two go to the studio. Okay. Okay. Oh, other question. Yes. I can repeat. Okay, let's say that the type of inputs are predefined. So, 1000 and 2000, we have three microphone inputs. Why do I say microphone? Microphones are a special type of input. They need to be preamplified. And if you have a, I don't remember, a dynamic micro microphone, I think, you need the Phantom 48 power. So, you cannot plug in any other type, okay? And then we have analog inputs, which are stereo, okay? Uh, usually, they're balanced, so they have XLR, and do you have to leave them like that. They're, but let's say you want more. Well, you can buy an external device that acts as a preamplifier. They're called microphone preamplifier, and you can use those four stereo inputs. I'm not sure if all four or just three, but you can then split them into six or eight mono inputs, which can be used also as microphones, okay? Then, of course, there's the Dante option, which is just IP coming in, and there's eight stereo. You can split them into 16 uh, mono, and, uh, and you can. Once you have all this array of inputs, you can assign any of these inputs to your channel. Okay, to the channel A, or the channel B, you can mix them, okay? 
You can reroute them. Why? It's a it's a digital mixer, so we have rerouting. Actually, you can assign the same source to all faders if you want. Doesn't make much sense. Correct. Okay. Yes. This is the I was suggesting. The uh, Stefano suggesting me. This is the advantage of a digital mixer: the fact that physical connectors are not connected to the physical channel. Physical connectors enter a virtual routing switcher, which is the DSP built inside, and then it's with the DSP that you can reroute to any channel in any configuration. So we kind of reinterpreted this. We made it a little more simple to manage because sometimes there's a concept which users, which usually are familiar with analog consoles, are not very used to. So this is very easy to use. I'll show you directly on the software. For every fader, if I find my mouse, for every fader, let's go on channel 12, I can actually define from the list of available sources whatever I want to assign to the channel A of the fader. And I can do the same thing with the channel B. So I have a long list of sources. And then I simply assign my sources to the channel A or channel B of that fader. Uh, let's let's put it like that. Okay. Do we have any? Okay. Yeah. But I'm going to say something. We also make a visual radio product, and usually a visual radio product needs. Uh, a GPI interface with the console. Why? In a visual radio product, when I turn off my faders of my microphones, I want the cameras to go on air and start slide showing, and that's what, and, mo and switching automatically. We do that with our product, of course, without any GPI console. Why? We simply access the console through the REST APIs. There's a bunch of APIs inside. We actually, one of them is public, which is the one which actually gives the status of the microphones. And there are other competitors of ours who you know, do visual radio who already have the APIs and do this. So I don't need any physical interface to know the status of my channels. And actually, we also publish the level of the microphone. So you can do even more extravagant stuff and actually put the camera on air of the guy who's loud, whose voice is louder, something like that. So. Oh, you can do a lot of things. They, we actually have smart buttons, which on the 3000, they're physical, but we left them virtual on the 1000. And you can send REST APIs and the TCP IP commands and connect those with the specific events of the console. So there's, there's a lot there. And, but this is to tell you that the consoles are made to go visual. Okay, why? Because we want also the in ma maximum integration with our old, own visual radio. Okay? Yeah, with the smart buttons, we use the buttons, for example, to start and stop uh, the automation. Oh, oh yeah, of course, uh, a slider open. Uh, if you connect the, uh, the, the smart button or the smart feature directly to the start, of the fader, when I open the fader, the automation will go and play. This is the typical application, of course, not only just for visual radio, but for very normal, let's say, in traditional radio. The old way of doing it was with a GPI output. And of course, that is all possible using the GPIs. Don't remember how many are free. We use a lot of GPI, but I think I have uh, four physical GPI inputs, four physical GPI outputs. But you can have more with external boxes, which we support via TCP AP. Okay, so I think we are good. Yeah, there was a lot. There was a lot to say because the product is fantastic. We are very proud about this product, and so we, we think it's good. The public and the users are really, really going to love it. Okay, so don't forget to go get back to Eric to get your information, which is. Uh, also, uh, not only for technical information, but also for sales information. So U.S. broadcast distribution is here, and I'm sure you're going to want to know more about these two products because I'm sure that the, the users and the market is going to want to know more. So don't forget to, to get in touch. So thank you, Eric. Thank you, everybody, for listening until now. I'm going to pass you the microphone.
so you can, you know, say hello. That was really amazing. Um, yeah. Okay. The latency with Dante yeah, is very low. The computer goes from six to ten milliseconds. Yeah. With the software driver, and with the hardware, it's two milliseconds, something yeah. like that. So I'm perceptive. Yeah. So um, thank you for that. He's a tough act to follow. Uh, and if you have any further questions, or you want to follow up. Um, get those charts that you're looking for, reach out to us, uh, sales1 at usbroadcast.co, and uh, we're more than happy to help arrange demos, further questions and answers, um, help get your customers uh, the tools that they need to do live productions um, and manage their audio, whether it's analog or digital. So once again, uh, thanks for watching. I'm gonna wrap up the webinar here.